Hello friends, this is a great pleasure in lecturing this series of uh, lectures. We are starting with the engineering mathematics. We have to start with unit 1 to tell you that there are 4 units in this course. Each unit is subdivided into various parts which contains different headings as you can see that we will be doing linear differential equation with variable coefficients, we will be doing with constant coefficients and then we will be dealing with homogeneous equations and therefore there are various and specifically these are all ordinary differential equations. In the next part we will be or next unit we will be going to partial differential equations and maybe we will be focusing some of the things on the applications of the differential equations, the partial and the ordinary differential equations. So, I believe that uh, these are the headings that you can see we will be beginning with unit 1 part 1 that means part A the titles that are very clear explicit and we will try to move accordingly but little slowly we will be avoiding much details and I believe that uh, those uh, tedious calculations will be avoided as far as possible due to the paucity of time and uh, we will try to substitute any other things for all those. So, we begin with the first part and we go ahead. We have this linear differential equation of second order is of the form d 2 y upon d x square I can say plus p d y upon d x plus q y equals to r we have uh, the p q r are functions of x only and then we have that is why this equation is called equation with variable coefficients as you can see the p and the q, uh, q is the coefficient of y and r as well is uh, the constant as, as it is uh, written here or a function of x it could be 0 as well. For example, this is the first question or first problem that we are dealing with as you can see it is x d 2 y upon d x square minus 2 x minus 1 d y upon d x plus x minus y equal to 0. And we have d 2 y d x square minus cot x d y upon d x minus of 1 minus cot x into y is equal to e to the power x sin x. You can make a note of it that on the right hand side which the fundamental equation has as capital R, uh, this is purely a function of x, it could be 0 as possible or it could be any constant. No general method of solving such equations can be given nor they are known. So, however, some particular cases can be considered in which the integral can be found. At this part juncture, I must let you know that solution of a differential equation always means solving an integration or solving an integral. We move forward and we have particular methods known to us are the first one is complete solution in terms of known integral belonging to the complementary function c f. There is no need now to tell you what do we mean by complementary function. There are two things one we find the complementary function and the second that we go for particular integrals, but right now we are only giving you the complementary function and that is one thing that these complementary functions are reduced from auxiliary equation. In abbreviations we write it as a e and that is obtained by putting uh, d y upon d x equal to or d d x equal to small m of all that we know. Then the second method is removal of the first derivative which we call as normal form. We have transformation by changing the independent variable, the independent variable as you know that is x, solution of factorization of the operator. These uh, four as you can see are very prominent methods that we can undertake. Then we have method of variation of parameters, these five combines all and constitute very important methods. We may as I have told you earlier also friends that we may not be able to undertake all these details, but as far as possible we will try to make you understand by all these methods. Present course does not involve all method except the last in number 
that is the method of variation of parameters. Method of variation of parameters is defined as you can see. This method is used only for those equations whose complementary functions are known of which we have said a little while ago. Then we have these illustrations. By illustrations we mean that uh, how do we solve it and what are the problems that we undertake. The first equation that is given as you can see is d2y upon dx square plus n square y is equal to sec of nx whose auxiliary equation gives about auxiliary equations I told you the auxiliary equation of the equation 1 will obviously become m square plus n square bracket y common equal to 0 right hand side has to be made 0 and so m square plus n square will give you m is equal to plus minus iota n that is why the next line you can read carefully. This is of the form that you can see is alpha plus iota beta I am mentioning the standard and the very typical standard example which we study in a very very lower class. Therefore, the complementary function that you can see is a cos nx plus b sin nx. We go further we assume that it is taken as y is equal to a cos nx plus b sin nx where a and b are constants the whole problem lies in that we should find them. This equation too as you can see y is equal to a cos nx plus b sin nx is the complementary function. Always we write y in the left hand side. Some books you can find that the right complementary function is they do not write y, but nonetheless this is not a wrong interpretation, but we follow this tradition of writing y is equal to. Equation 2 is the complete primitive of the given equation 1, but now to proceed further we consider a and b as functions of x. Mind it as we go further beyond this para where the sentence ends with we consider a and b as functions of x. Take care to note the very prominent calculations that we undertake here and the keywords that we want to set here. So, we begin with we differentiate this equation too with respect to x you can see it starts from dy upon dx then a is taken as the function of x as written above b is also taken as the function of x. So, a cos nx will become a product of two functions and we do it by differentiating product of two functions namely the first function differential of second plus second function differential of first and we write it here as a bracket minus n sin nx plus cos nx da dx. da over dx is the differentiation of the a which is kept uh, a as the first variable. So, that is the differentiation with respect to x of the equation 2. Similarly, we go further and we write uh, the equation 3 for uh, the differentiation with respect to b now. So, we have here this. The next step that is we are talking about equation 4 is uh, finding a and b that is the main problem that we have hinted earlier also in the preceding paragraphs is that a and b is to be chosen in such a way that the cos nx da dx plus sin nx db dx should be equal to 0 should be equal to 0. Then from 3 due to the application of the 4 obviously we obtain this result dy upon dx is equal to minus a n sin x plus b n cos n x. Again we differentiate 5 with respect to x that means we are going to the second prime in other words we call it a second differentiation of this function and so we are moving from 5 ahead with second derivative calling it d 2 y upon d x square the right hand side again after the same theory we go is minus a n square cos n x minus b n square sin n x that is after the second differentiation. Mm -hmm. 
and we have then continuing with this is minus n d a d x sin x plus n d b d x cos n x that that finishes this particular portion of the first derivative and of the second derivative that we mark and indicate as equation 6. Going further the final thing is we are, we are coming almost to the conclusion of the solution. So, you can read it when we substitute equation 6 in 1 and simplify we get n d a d x sin n x plus n d b d x cos n x equal to sec of n x that we mark as equation 7. Indeed, what now we write is 2 is substituted also in equation 1, 2 you can see in the in the preceding lines the equation 2 was there. Now, the things comes as that we multiply the equation 4 by it should be n cos n x and the equation 7 by sin n x and what then happens is subtract we get after multiplication these two equations uh, we subtract them and we get n d a d x is equal to 10 n x. From this particular line that n d a d x equal to tangent of n x one can very clearly visualize that uh, to find a an elementary mathematics practitioner or a student can understand that we are going finally to integrate by the method of separation of variables. However, we go further and tell you that particular calculations that is the equation 8 we integrate it by integration what we write is separating the variables is the method that we do. We write this n going on the denominator of right hand side and then we integrate it becomes integral of d a is equal to integral of 10 n x with 1 upon n outside the sign of integration. We integrate that is easy the result comes as an equation 8 and it is given as 1 upon n square log cos n x plus k 1. However, this k is merely a constant which is which as you know will be called as a constant of integration since it is a or it is an indefinite integral. Further we go repeat almost the same process, but little vice versa as you can read multiply 4 by n sin n x and 7 by cos n x and add it it gives on integration the b is equal to x upon n plus k 2 k 2 is another constant complete primitive of 1 primitive means the solution of the given equation 1 is obtained by substituting the relations 8 the relation 9 and relation 2. So, in, in brief what we have learned is the second order differential equation to repeat again it is very easy to see it will start with d 2 y upon d x square that is the second order derivative we call it as second order differential equation. Then we have p d y upon d x and the last is q y with the right hand side we have a function of uh, x or may it be a constant. Part b as you can see is homogeneous linear equations uh, by homogeneous the basic thing you can you can see what is written here. The power of the variable as you can see should be the same as the power of the derivatives. For example, you have x square and then the derivatives order should be also second. If you have x power 3 then we should have the order of the derivative as d 3 y upon d x cube as you can see in equation 1 it reads then an equation of the form x to the power n d n y d x n that means the nth derivative plus c 1 x to the power n minus 1 d n minus 1 d x n minus 1 it continues to finally c n y equal to capital X of course there is a term that is coming called as c n minus 1 x d y upon d x because it will become x to the power n minus n and finally, the first derivative will be achieved there. It is written here very very clearly that c 1 c 2 c n are constants 
and the x which we are seeing on the right hand side of equation 1 is either a constant or a function of x. This is the whole structure, the whole frame, the equation that you are looking at is called as linear differential equation. It is a homogeneous. So, the whole thing is called as homogeneous linear differential equations. We move further. Solution of 1 is given very explicitly. The first few lines will make you understand what the entire method deals with. We write here that the equation 1 is transformed into linear equation with constant coefficients. This we have done years ago in the preceding classes. Equation 1 is transformed into linear equation with constant coefficients. So, we substitute as x is equal to e to the power z. This transformation is done generally, generally not for any specific by changing independent variable x to a another variable z and the substitution that you are saying is x is equal to e to the power z. We differentiate and we get dx dz is equal to e to the power z. Again e to the power z can be written as x looking into the equation or the relation given above. We proceed further. And therefore, we write it as dy upon dz. This is a parametric relation as you can see. This is written as dy upon dz equal to dy upon dx into dx dz and that gives you a result at x dy upon dx. Mind it that the term which you are seeing in the middle between those two signs of inequality, this dy upon dx into dx upon dz does not mean that this dx and dx from numerator and denominator will get cancelled. They do not because differentiation is not or derivative is not a fraction, it is a ratio and therefore, we say that dy upon dx is pronounced as d dx of y in other words rate of change of y with respect to x and therefore, we write here that it becomes dy upon dx equal to x to the power minus 1 dy upon dx. This x to the power minus 1 is just transforming and getting a reciprocal of only x on the right hand side where this capital D is the operator stands for d d z wherever we write. In further pages we will be or in further lectures we will be observing and noticing it. This is a very important uh, box that we will read and we would like to understand what they mean with. When once the given homogeneous equation is transferred or converted into a linear equation with constant coefficients its solution is obtained by finding the complementary function we call C f and the particular integral we called P i that is the abbreviation we use by methods already known and in the last replace z by log x. If you, if you go on the preceding page of the lecture, we have substituted x is equal to e to the power z and therefore, we can write by the theory of logarithms as z is equal to log of x and by that, that is why we have written in the last replace z by log x. That is all fairly done, that is all comprehensible and I believe that you can now solve with this substitution the whole homogeneous equation given by equation 1 there. We sorted out certain kind of uh, example may not be very difficult, but yet we would like to know the entire method as we go by. This example which we are taking equation 3 is the solution which we intend to solve when it is given as x square d to y upon dx square plus 2 x dy upon dx minus 20 y is equal to x plus 1 whole square which is obviously homogeneous as you can see from equation 3 and by the definitions of homogeneity that we have explained, 
it is x square d2y upon dx square plus 2x dy upon dx minus 20 of y is equal to x plus 1 whole square. Note it and compare it with equation 1 which is obviously homogeneous as you can see by the definition we substitute x is equal to e to the power z. We differentiate equation 4 gives you dx upon dz is equal to x by the definition done and therefore we get dx upon dz also equal to e to the power z where z is equal to log x. We move further. We write dy upon dx and uh, then we get here as you can see the same equations dy upon dz into dz dx. For uh, d dz we write capital D is an operator. It is very important name and person who is studying calculus mainly differential calculus must be knowing the name of the operator. So, we we avoided giving the detailed definition of an operator which we call as differential operator. Read here, it is written as dy into e to the power minus z where this is given and then we get dx dy upon dz is equal to dy, very clear. We take this x on the left hand side and we get this result. We differentiate once again and we get x d2y upon dx square plus dy upon dx equal to capital D dy dx as simple as that. We simplify and using the 6 equation which we have we get this result finally as d minus 1 into dy or in other words you can write d into d minus 1 multiplied by y. We go further we put fourth equation the sixth equation and the seventh equation in 3 and we get this result y is obviously taken common in the bracket we have all operators and therefore we write it simply as this one we have opened the right hand side bracket with the formula of a plus b whole square which is very obvious and we get equation 9 whose complementary function as you can know is given by this I do not go to detail the auxiliary fun equations and then we find the method but nonetheless this is known to all we solve when we get equation 11. The particular integral talking about is also can be found. We go to the second and that is part of non-homogeneous equations or equations reducible to homogeneous form. I can take it as the complete method but the method is as these equations will be appearing in this form that is given by equation 12. These capital A1, A2, A n and similarly the small a and b both as you can see appearing in equation 12 are constant capital X has the usual meaning, meaning thereby it can be a function of x or it can be a constant. We go further, we take an example because the theory is too explanatory and it may take or it may consume a very lengthy amount of time. So, we thought of making this example easily comprehensible to you. You can make a very easy note out of which these solutions. So, what happens is the equation 13 reads that x plus a whole square d2y dx square minus 4 into x plus a dy upon dx plus 6y is equal to x is the equation 13 no homogeneity can be observed. So, we put x plus a is equal to e to the power z. If you note and compare with the previous example, there also we have put some of these kinds. So, it becomes z is equal to log of x plus a by the definition of logarithm. We make differentiation, do the same things and so they are the similar relations of 4 to 7 that we did a while ago. Equation 13 then reduces to this I can say this is similar to equation 9 that we done just now. We solve by the method of and we want to elaborate that method note that it becomes now x4 d3y and solutions can be found but this note 15 and 16 I am giving you because this is also a class of equation which is non-homogeneous and therefore 
you can see it, it is x4 d3y dx cube, it is 2x cube d2y upon dx square, it is minus x square dy upon dx plus xy is equal to 1. The, the main feature is though the derivative has an order third, but the coefficient has power 4 that is x4. Come to equation 16, we have the coefficient x square and then you can read the third order derivative. Similarly, in the second term we have second order derivative and the coefficient is x to the power 1. So, these are not called non-homogeneous equations because they can be shaped into, we do not call them non-homogeneous like the one we defined just now. What we do is the first equation that is equation 15 if you look into, we simply divide it by x it becomes x cube d 3 y 2 x square d 2 y upon d x square. We match them, we manipulate to make it homogeneous. Similarly, we do for the 16th equation when we make it homogeneous. Now, it looks homogeneous, we put x is equal to e to the power z, proceed in this similar way and finish the solution. Well, friends, we have uh, finished the part A and part B of unit 1, the title of which uh, has been shown to you. It deals with uh, linear differential equations with variable coefficients, then we did the homogeneous equations. We have noted how to find the solution of it. We had keywords like complementary functions and the particular integral. And to remind you that the complementary function as you all know is uh, basically obtained from the term called as auxiliary equation which is indicated in terms of m. Then we have shown that uh, the homogeneous equations are solved by replacing the independent variable x to a new variable z by a substitution x is equal to e to the power z with various differentiation we conclude and we get the solution finally. But then there is another section that we have done as you have noted is a non-homogeneous equation. In other words, we say that those equations can be converted into uh, homogeneous equations. The substitutions were there and the equations that you have noticed begins with x plus a whole to the power n d n y upon d x n plus x to the power x plus a whole to the power n minus 1, it goes on. The right hand side remains the same and we have seen that we again substitute something like x plus a that coefficient is equal to e to the power z, then we convert them into log of z etcetera. Finally, we have shown you that there is an equation whose uh, coefficient uh, index is different from the order of the derivative that you can see in the final maybe 15, 16, 17th and 18th equation of part b, where, where we have seen that they are not called exactly as non-homogeneous, but we had there as x to the power 4 and then we have d 3 y upon d x q or in other words it was x q and uh, we have d 3 y upon d x q. So, we multiply either throughout the equation by x or we divide by x the given equation, it automatically transforms into the homogeneous equation. That all summarizes the part A and part B, very simple. We have illustrated some theories by examples that will make you easier to apply and then of course, mathematics is as such more we do, more we get the professionalism. Thank you for your attention.